So the first thing, I'd like my panelists to introduce themselves and then um, I'll proceed to just get a feel of the crowd and see um, the skill levels, the tech stacks and the industries ideally that are uh, represented. So uh, welcome guys to this year's DevCraft and I genuinely hope that you'll take a lot from it. So I will start with Kate. A veteran in the industry, uh, uh, nine years experience, yes, <laughs> I think you're coding when I was in secondary, <laughs> actually that's, uh, that, 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 that's actually all, so kindly just give her the mic. Okay, hi, um, hi. As, as you've heard, I'm Kate and I think a brief about me is I've been coding in tech here in Nairobi, local market, for the past nine years. Um, I started out when it was the Dujua language to know was Java, if you wanted to work in Kenya. And over time, I've had the pleasure of seeing the market change from legacy old big companies to startups coming in and just adapting life as they go along. So I am a backend engineer, primarily. Like I am those people who are like, I do front-end under duress. I have no disrespect for front-end engineers. Trust me, when you know what they do, you, you'll know I am None a taken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'll know I insist back-end engineer, but I can do HTML, JavaScript when necessary. And I'm excited to be here because I, I learn a lot from the community. And these days, that's really all I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about, getting to see other people do 10 years plus in the local space. Oh, mm. My name is Marvin. I've been calling Sosea. Um, I, I don't have much years in, in development. I think roughly uh, four years since I started actively developing. Developing, I've developed for right now six companies. Okay, then I branch out to start uh, a technology company, which is known as Apps Lab. Okay, um, I think for now that's that's all. Um, hi guys, uh, my name is Joe. Um, I'm a software engineer focusing on front-end technologies. Um, I started out just building, I'm, a, I'm self-taught. So when I started out, uh, I started out just uh, messing around with Joomla and WordPress sites. And uh, I was building e-commerce websites. Uh, I think this is way back. Uh, then, uh, I decided to concentrate on front-end technologies uh, because I have a bag background in design. So the way it started is that when I was in school, uh, I needed to do a project. And uh, uh, I could design, but I could encode the project. So either I had to find someone who could code it for me, and I didn't have money at the time. So everyone was, you know, I was looking for someone who can do it like pro bono, just for free. And I couldn't, so uh, I, I thought, how hard can this thing be? So that's how I started. Uh, yeah, um, right now I've been in the industry for almost ten years. Uh, I worked for back then. You didn't have, we didn't have lots of startups in Kenya, um, but we had some agencies. And back then it was just websites, you know. Um, so that's what I was doing, and I've worked for different um, agencies startups, non-profits. Uh, right now, I'm a front-end engineer at Twigger Foods. Um, yeah, I'm also keen on GraphQL. I hold a meetup called GraphQL Nairobi. So if you're keen on that, you can join us and, you know, share ideas. Um, I'm also keen on open source. I do a, a bit of contribution. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Hey, guys. Um, Hello. Thank you for having me, by the way, DevCraft and iHub. Um, yeah, I'm Ahmed, a uh, software engineer at Frontline SMS and recently the Scrum Master. I feel like I'm obligated to plug Frontline real quick <laughs> for SMS. Uh, so basically, Frontline SMS works with um, SMS workflow. So if there's anything you want to do with SMS and your automations, anything like that, we can do it for you. We've worked with like companies, oh, like you, John, for example, Johns Hopkins University, where they're doing research in Thailand with male sex workers. We've worked with um, companies in Mexico, organizations in Mexico that's dealing with modern day slavery, where immigrant workers would not be paid enough or be treated unfairly. 
So anything basically that you would like to um, automate using SMS, we can do it for you. Um, so that's frontline SMS. For me, um, so my path to software development or software engineering is a bit different. Um, maybe, maybe similar to uh, Joe here. Um, studied civil engineering in China. So if you guys want to talk about China after this, <laughs> let me know. Uh, then transitioned uh, through uh, Moringa and self-taught and yeah, to become now a software engineer. Have you taken on any civil engineering project? Uh, no, no, not, not at all, yeah. I guess it's becoming a common trend for you to do one thing in uni and then go through a boot camp and then end up being a software engineer. That's a very interesting trend in the industry. Um, so now, just to get a feel of the crowd, um, how many uh, engineers do we have uh, in the room? If you're an engineer, just, just, just wave your hand. I won't ask you to shout, it's in the morning. Ah, okay, cool. Uh, so let me just get a type of engineer. Uh, mobile, mobile developers. Ah, okay, quite a number. Uh, Front-end engineer, JavaScript. Oh, wow. Uh, Back-end engineer. Whoa, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, huh, do I go to the ears? Okay, how many guys have done at least uh, your, okay, your five years and above in the industry? Ah, awesome. Um, three to five years? In between three to five years? Okay. In between zero to two years. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. Yeah, we're well represented then. Yeah. Okay, so the first question uh, to our panelists is, uh, what does it mean, uh, what does the term modern developer uh, mean to you? You know, given the different uh, paradigms that we've had in tech, uh, the word modern has stood for different things at different times um, in the technology space. So in this time, uh, what does the term modern developer uh, mean to you? Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm starting. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I've been thinking about this. Um, so the way I've, uh, the way uh, the, what what it means to me is in two aspects. So the first aspect is about um, how things were in the past, which I'm not privy to, but yeah, how I think it was in the past where there was, there was, lit, there was less choices, right? The, you had to do Java, right? Um, which, which is different now. Now we have uh, option paralysis where should I do Vue, should I do React, should I do Python, should I... It's, it's so the choice nowadays, like the modern, the modern, developer modern has is more options. Yes, yes. And we, 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 f we find ourselves, especially um, junior developers or interns, they look towards um, other, other, other people to tell them what direction to take. Um, so that's what I've seen. It means to be a modern developer is for you to navigate to this world where you're, my, you're, not, you're no longer, because so b back in the day, I assume, let's say if the thing that sh the library or whatever you're using didn't do what you needed to do, you needed to go and do it, right? Right now, you just, we just manage libraries. That's, that's what we do. I don't need to be a database engineer for me to use my SQL or Firebase, right? I can just put this thing, manage these two libraries together and be able to do what I need to do. So there's that aspect. Um, the other aspect that what it means for me, to, I think, to be uh, a modern developer, a modern software developer, is um, to use um, the processes that we that people have come up with to 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 do to make modern uh, to make software development easy. That is DevOps as a process, not as tools, as most people think it is, and agile to allow us to uh, output more things. Yeah. So that, I think that's that's how I've understood as what it means to me to be a modern software developer. Oh, okay. Uh, Joe? Uh, for me, I think it's, it's, more, it's more what he said, but uh, right now we have, I'm, I'm speaking from a front-end guy perspective. Uh, if you're in the front-end world, there's so many things and options, and, you know, and it's crazy. If, if, if you are, like, all over the place, you can, you can, like, lose yourself and, like, you know, like, bits of things but you're not like um, you know a master or I'd say uh, proficient in one you know paradigm or tool or library so for me uh, what it means it, it means that you need to to know to be aware of uh, the trends that are there 
but also like um, you need to 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 know what tool to use uh, uh, given your use case the use case that you want because uh, most of them they do more or less the same but some are good at doing one thing over the other so uh, for me uh, a modern software developer is having that ability uh, to distinguish what to use in in different use cases okay uh, let me Yep. I think I'll, I'll, I'll break it down into four. And uh, the first one is being a modern software developer, first thing is you need to continuously learn. So always, because tech ecosystem or the, the, the technologies, uh, the ones that exist and some are being introduced, they keep on evolving. So you need to keep uh, learning. Okay. Uh, the second, uh, the second um, uh, process of being a modern developer uh, is continuous improvement. Okay, when you are, uh, for example, a Java developer, and uh, we started at Java six, for instance, and we are at, I think, Java twelve. So you need to continuously improve your skills in Java or PHP or Go. Okay, then uh, the third process is. Uh, um, try and develop open source project or libraries okay when you're working on a side project or a client project it's different uh, the, the is, it's different when you're working on an open open source project because open source tend to follow the industry standards but when you're working on a side uh, side project you can you know just throw in the code uh, as long as it's work okay but when you push your code to open source, you know people will correct you. People will you know point issues or you know uh, on what you need to do. And lastly, is redocumentation. Okay? Yeah, we have this culture of developers going to Stack Overflow to patch codes. Okay? But I take a different approach. You need to go read the documentation of what you're trying to implement. Okay? Uh, that way you will understand more as compared to going to stack over or stack overflow to patch a code yeah well uh being last they've said really much of what i also agree with <laughs> uh, mine has but, been said uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i think for me in addition to what has been said part of being a modern engineer today for me is understanding that software engineering is not the classic idea of this guy in a back room or this girl in a back room doing magic things with a computer for others like that hacker image going away for me being a modern engineer means understanding that software is very social and that would lead you to now learning what's going on in the market you don't have to know you don't have to do every new language that you hear about but it helps to be aware of yeah there is this new thing that's supposed to be good for that so if you have a project in that language you can consider it as an option like does it does it serve my purpose that's where the knowing what tools to use would come in for you and the other thing about the social aspect is what would make you come to a conference like this like you can't learn everything everything every day you wake up if you are whatever rss feed you are subscribed to whether it's hacker news or whichever tech crunch whichever you look at every day you wake up you see new things and it will overwhelm you so you can never know everything which is where now like interacting with other engineers comes in handy because you get to teach and learn from people so just realizing that software is social and so when you're building your software you will be it should be doing more towards impact like it's not just there i just need to set up this server hack this steal some money there or something else none of that it's about where are we building this software are we being responsible with it how can i contribute back to the open source community if you're able to and if not how can you contribute in other areas like mentoring others and learning new skills okay uh thank you for that so just try to sum up that first point so the modern developer has a so uh, what does it take so there's a social perspective so you have to be uh, collaborative you have to think from that angle um in terms of problem solving skills um being open to corrections from uh, the open source community and platforms such as uh, uh, the good and faithful stack overflow uh, from which has built many careers <laughs> and paid many bills uh, on time and <laughs> 
it's 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 a reality <laughs> it's a reality um uh, the modern developer has to adapt and learn fast yet stay lean at the same at uh, the same time uh, there's information overload given uh, the digital age that we live in but the tradition of specialization that um, uh, the tradition of specialization is still there like you still have to get the right information build a certain area and then now expand into another um, software development uh, the the modern software developer has to be uh, willing to uh, adapt has to be willing to uh, take on uh, take on new tasks and also um, I, I, I ideally move with the times yet uh, ideally stay uh, stay grounded in uh, certain technologies okay so now we'll go deeper so I want to talk about uh, focus areas so what do I what, what what do I need to uh, to focus on? Uh, what what does what does a modern developer now need to uh, to focus on? How we're going to look at this is um, from the hiring process. Uh, you know, there's nothing that uh, causes someone to know what to learn, uh, like when they're looking for a job. You know, as you know, how do most guys learn languages? I mean, guys look at okay, which one has the market? you know where can i eat from you know which one can pay my bills ideally we still there is a commercial aspect to learning this now to build on that we want to look at now some of the qualities uh, required at uh, different skill levels so start with my first question so um i'll start from k because you have the mic um if you're hiring for a in your line it's a back-end developer right and you're hiring for back-end junior developer what are the top three things um, in light of their capabilities what, what, what would you be looking for um, for me if I'm hiring I look for especially for a junior engineer yeah first I want to see that they're capable of learning like okay. this is someone who it w like I think when you're a junior engineer, the worst thing you can tell me is I don't know. If you tell me your backend and your child, like this is the language I've tried to do, I will look at if you have a GitHub profile. What are the pet so projects? So the proof of work, uh, yeah, pet like projects, just to your see hero core. Evidence of curiosity, basically, not proof of work. It's I just like that. <laughs> evidence of your curiosity and what you dabble in, because I want to know you can learn. At that point, I'm not trying to see that you've built anything. I just want to know that you're teachable. And when we show you things, you can pick them up quickly and build with them. The other thing I want to know is you're open-minded, so to speak, because it's the worst thing for me if I'm trying to interview you and I'm asking you a question maybe on this code, how, why did you follow this process? And your feedback comes, oh, you know, my lecturer told me this, this is the only way things can be done. Or I read it in this blog and there is no way you're convincing so no adaptability. me otherwise. So you need to understand that you don't know, like you know, you leave campus, you feel I'm it. I have my degree. I'm there to change the world. Mm -hmm. Then you go to a company and they tell you, hey, actually that stack you learned is so fresh. We are still like four generations behind. Having also that humility and being humble enough to say, my skills are my skills, but I can adapt them to what this company is trying to build and work with. That's really what I will be looking for. And then obviously working well with others. I, do, I, I personally, I don't do the whole, I'm a silo at the corner, let me do my magic and then all of you all just be amazed after it. Just being able to work with others is really the main thing I look for. Yeah. Ah, okay. So for Marvin, uh, can you just tell us, so for you it's mobile is your uh, forte. Actually, uh, to surprise you, I stopped developing he stopped. two years ago. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, but, but to answer that question, uh, <laughs> uh, that, that, that <laughs> there's a reason to it. Okay. okay. Um, to answer that question, um, yeah. I've worked for six companies before branching out. And uh, one thing I've learned throughout these companies is attitude matters a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, soft software development is a collaborative work. You communicate with the people, okay? As much as we can say we will push gate, you will read from my gate, you will read from my issues, but attitude matters. If, if, if I'm working with you, if I can talk to you, if I can tell you this process doesn't work, and, uh, you know, have a, uh, a constructive conversation about it, then I think you can, that attitude, you know, you, the, 
you want to prosper as a modern developer because you love that single solo mindset of my craft works well okay and and uh, over, over 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 time i think of uh, my development skills has grown because i listened a lot okay and when somebody throws an argument about an architecture you need to give reason why it's working or yours is working well okay this narrowed down to a simple of using for example in php you use four or for each for looping through an array and someone use array array map array k map okay so i'll tell you that this take will take uh, less resources and this one will consume a lot of resources as in it's not visible but that conversation okay you need to prove why okay then um the second thing uh well if if uh, if uh, I, i think we've not hired a surplus uh, at apps lab as a developer we tend to have a kind of a relation first before we hire a developer okay it make it easy because apart from software development there's some other social issues that we battle okay family relation relationship and etc okay so if you guys can't have that atmosphere okay if you're going to employ someone and you can't have that atmosphere trust me the person will leave or the company will not progress okay then um uh, one last thing is uh, is is the attitude of the company okay before you employ uh, maybe let me say a modern developer if if you employ someone and they want to fix something in your company okay you need to listen to what they think should be done in your company okay so we should not throw uh, you know the question to like you want to employ someone and you have this set of values that you want in your company okay they have their own their own their own mission or for or to to achieve in life and they can bring that on into your company and kind of you need to you know sync okay so that aspect is also very important when i'm hiring or when i want to ask someone yeah oh okay um so for my next two so i like the perspective that you've actually brought in of uh, both the company side and ideally the culture shift to actually seeing in uh, in as much as you require the adaptability the problem solving the curiosity uh, really from the junior perspective that uh, your company also needs to uh, transform in, into one that actually accommodates um, uh, these specific uh, traits so uh, for Joe and Ahmed uh, I'll ask you uh, would things change if you guys were hiring for a mid level uh developer so they've dealt with the junior side um let's look at a mid level developer what what are some of the things that you'd you'd add on what are, are, there, are there certain considerations uh, you'd make differently now uh, that you're hiring for a mid level developer i'll let him uh, take on if you're hiring a front end mid level developer what are some of the things that you'd be looking for okay um i think if 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 i'm hiring for a mid level guy uh, front end uh, specifically um uh, this is someone that i'm thinking um someone who uh might start contributing to to the projects right away uh so the first thing is a a, a track record um in terms of work what has this guy worked on and uh now that can go into uh technical details uh if if i can just mention just a few uh specifically for uh front end um can this uh, is this someone who can you know uh, be able to find bugs by himself and find a way how to fix these bugs uh, is this someone who um um is uh also like uh, someone who is like a uh, self learner someone who can learn uh, if i give this uh, for example let's say we have some apis and we have some documentation is this someone who can find his way through he can just go and read and figure out how to you know use these apis um is this someone who can you know write modular and maintainable code um is this someone who can handle you know things like 
internationalization of application. Uh, you know, uh, is this someone who can write performant applications? I think those are some of the things that I'd be looking at. Yeah. Okay, so at a mid-level, you're more concerned about the approach they take to solve a problem. So they've already demonstrated that they're willing to learn, but now the next level to get into that. Uh, so after, as you grow your junior capability, get into the mid, it's how you approach a problem uh, that matters and how you now figure out, okay, how do I make this code not my own and writing more maintainable and clean code? Okay, uh, Ahmed? Um, just to add on the junior developer um, role also, um, if there are employers in the room, please hire interns as well and pay them. <laughs> <laughs> as, an inter I, as an intern, I shouldn't have to sell mandazis and rabbit meat. I, I don't think the mandazi <laughs> story will ever, <laughs> will ever leave the industry, by the right. way. <laughs> yeah, and also hire your junior developers, right? You don't deserve senior developers if you don't hire junior developers. Yeah. Oh, right. by the way, uh, question to the crowd. So there might be guys who don't know what a mandazi is. <laughs> How would you define a mandazi? In English. <laughs> a question for you. <laughs> what do you call a mandazi in English? <laughs> a pastry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a pastry. It's just call it a Kenyan pastry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Cook cooked in uh, suspicious oil. <laughs> Uh, depending on where you're buying it from. Yeah. yeah. So just so yeah, I just wanted to say that for, for the junior developers and the interns in the room. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so for mid level developers, I would I think I would add yes, maintainable. Uh, uh, can they, if I was tell them to, because the one thing that will co is constant is change in the code. Mm -hmm. Can they write code that we can maintain in the field that is extensible in the future? Right. That's that's what I'll be looking at. How do, can they break down problems into s smaller tasks that we can n do? Um, this is hard to gauge, and I think it's very difficult to gauge, especially in the interview process, is um, culture. Can they, can they not compromise on the things that we said we're not going to compromise on it as a team, right? Can they maintain that culture and continue and uphold the culture in a team? I think that's, those are the things I would be looking at. Yeah. So I guess an interview wouldn't give you everything. You'd need a probation period to kind of uh, see some of these things. Okay, so just hand over the mic. So I'll go uh, back to uh, Kate. So um, now you've uh, we, we've looked at the journey and all the values required. Now uh, on to the top level, senior developer. Uh, this is near, uh, nowadays it's like senior developer also stands for CTO, depending on the startup size ideally. <laughs> like, uh, you, you might either be told senior developer, then you're looking at your roles, you're like, uh, also do hiring. And you're like, wait, this is more of a CTO, <laughs> this, this, this is CTO level. So by this time, Kate, um, how much more would you consider now that you're looking for a senior person, how much more would you actually look for? What are now the focus areas that you'd be honing in on? Uh, I actually, let me just start by saying that. Yes. Interviewing these days is part and parcel of being a senior engineer. Mm -hmm. Because that's part of the thing, like where I say that is when you're becoming more senior, because, okay, backtrack. As a mid-level engineer, there is no set time. That's one thing we tend to struggle with. You're like, yeah. how much time do I need to put in before now I can shed the mid? Like, I think it's easy to say junior after two years, you're for sure, you're no longer a junior engineer. But being a mid engineer, you can be there for a long time. Like, it depends with where you work, what you're exposed to, and how you feel in terms of my expertise. It starts becoming very subjective to you. So, but by the time you're thinking about being a senior, this is something I actually struggled with myself. Because I was thinking, hey, I want to be a senior engineer. Then you ask yourself, what exactly is a senior engineer? Who is a senior engineer? Exactly. Yeah. Because I'm like, I can work in one company for five years and I assure you I'll be a senior engineer by year four. Because my expertise in that particular company's code base is superb. I know every way. I, when a bug comes, I can just tell you this line of that file, go fix it. I'm a senior engineer. I've worked with this code for so long. But then I thought that's not enough. Because I would try to hire a senior engineer. Someone comes in and I'm like, your depth of 
like your breath, you know, that, like there's that T-shape thing they teach you in school. Like mastery is how deep you know a subject and then breath is how many other related things you know about that subject. So as a senior engineer, I start looking at the top part of the T. So I know you can write Python code, you can optimize your code until it runs in the shortest time possible. But is that really all you know? If you tell me you're good with this is Kenya, so you all know about find fintech. Fintech, everyone has tried an app or another to do with mobile money or moving money around. So if you tell me that's what you know, great. But you can't tell me that the only way to do mobile wallet is to integrate to M-Pesa. Because I'll be like, so all you know is how to do integrations to M-Pesa API and you're calling yourself a senior engineer. That's not enough. You need to tell me what else you're looking at. Do you know how we can do Stripe? Can we integrate? Now you should be telling me, I have studied how APIs work in the mobile space. And based on the business we are, you're doing or whatever your company mission and goal is, this is what I would suggest as an improvement. I would expect your architecture to look like this or the other. So that's what I would expect on a technical side and which leads to the hiring side. Why would you be involved in interviews? Because as a senior engineer, you start owning the culture. Like it's up to you to make sure that the new engineers coming are people who can build on to the tech team. Like you should be helping the business build a tech team that is not to die for, to live for. Yeah, like everyone else should be for. trying to. <laughs> <laughs> How many things like would you place? die for in this world? <laughs> <laughs> Something to live for. Like everyone else should be coming to your company to try to poach and they can't because they're like, I don't know what they do there, but the people they get, they're the real deal. So that's why you would do interviews. It's not a chore. It's just part of your contribution because as a senior engineer, it's we know you can code. That's great. But now it's, how else are we able to utilize your knowledge and experience in building a team we can all be proud of? Uh, so I like that. Uh, the abstraction level is higher. So you're more of a fundamentalist now. It's, it's interesting how the higher you go, the lower you still have to go. Uh, you have to go back, you reach the top, and then you're like, oh, I now need to go back to the foundation again. Kind of break things up and understand them at a more basic level to kind of see how you can contribute uh, to contribute back. You're also now more mature in terms of, um, I believe, uh, your social skills. So you're a builder of a team. You're a person who can actually uh, take on the task of growing others. Because I think that's the thing about seniority. Like, uh, seniority is more of how well can you pass on uh, what you know and step back. Uh, well, the success of others now is how you measure your success. Uh, like it's not the success of a build, you know, like how different levels uh, measure their successes and success of a scene is like that guy succeeded, that guy came here knowing nothing, was able to understand, was able to get, those are now your new metrics. Uh, if ideally you're considering um, the role as senior developers to play, even in thinking about the, uh, being a modern developer and more so in a senior role. Um, yeah. Marvin? Um, so I'll, I'll I'll take a different approach. Um, yep. First, uh, let me say if uh, if you, uh, I was to hire a senior developer, the first uh, the first value that uh, the first the first thing I look does this person fit in our team? Okay, because you can't be a senior developer if you don't fit in our team. Okay. Uh, what and do you mean by that? Just uh, break it down a oh, bit. I, I'm breaking it yeah. down. Okay. <laughs> so um, I run a business. Okay. And uh, when I bring you in and in, into my team, that means you're going to add value into our business process. For instance, okay. So yes, you can be a senior developer, but we don't see any value as a company or as a business. Okay. Then on development side, uh, you are not a senior developer by mastering your craft. For example, if you're good at uh, Kotlin, okay but you are a senior developer by understanding all the concept of that language or framework okay uh, and uh, we have this mindset that if you are a senior developer you need to understand devops you need to set up server uh, you need to you know understand a little bit of front end but in our company it's different okay we have a, someone who is very good at python and is good at that period okay there's another person who is good at kotlin he's good at that he doesn't even know how to set up database or or api it's very good at that 
period then there's a uh, someone who's good at designing back end good at apis and is a senior developer okay so your company if you have so many senior developers doing so many things you will not have a company you will have a breaking company but you have senior developer who know their craft and all the components that build that you know a certain uh, craft for example kotlin or java and you have another guy who is good at front end and another guy is good at business development process then when you combine all these senior developers you form a very solid company okay so senior developer is not you know knowing everything if i if uh, if you want to hire a senior developer for example senior developer in android and someone comes to you and say i'm good in android but i'm good in android front end that person is a senior developer okay another person will say i'm good at android but i'm good at android back and like you know not xml kotlin or java that is that person is a, a senior developer so if you combine those two people they will develop a very solid solution that will impact your business that's my approach oh okay so um i will actually take a different question but i like the perspective that you brought in of uh, an interesting specialization uh, whereby they've broken apart okay fine i can do end to end but where exactly can i provide the most uh, value uh, in this business um for uh, to um we'll actually uh, end that line of uh, thought there uh for you guys i want to ask is there any particular uh, given the the number of changes that happen in tech um do you have a process where you toy around with new applications new thought patterns how do you stay abreast what's the jo system the ci for jo for for say jo uh, say ci because he actually mentioned continuous improvement which is similar to continuous integration so <laughs> the person yeah that's a very inside a tech joke uh, but uh, yeah it's very 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 inside uh, ci continuous improvement um, what's your continuous improvement stack is it <laughs> sorry <laughs> um, i think i think for me particularly is um, in know the stuff that you care about in your specific domain uh like we mentioned there are lots of things and you can't really keep up with all of these things uh but uh the first thing that I normally do is uh in my space there are certain people that I think as dot leaders um so uh particularly on twitter so I just follow these guys on twitter and uh and you know you can even uh, create a list of guys that you'd like to see uh you know uh some of the things that they tweet uh so the way i do it is in the front end world there's so many things to keep up with but for me i just it it, it helps to know that this thing exists right it doesn't have to mean that i need to use this thing right away but i need to know uh like there's this thing uh that exists uh, exists and then and know what it offers uh apart from whatever other thing that i'm using and uh i can i can if i have time i can you know just toy around with it and you know just see but just on a high level but uh at the same time understanding that how different it is from whatever i'm using or from whatever i know then um uh, it helps uh in case uh in the future if i'm working on a project and uh after i get uh, you know the tech requirements of this application and then now i can assess what tools what libraries to use and then now if need be uh i'll be able to know oh i i learned about this somewhere and i think this can you know help me tackle this problem better than x um yeah i think that's how uh i i I keep myself abreast. And then also I read a lot, uh, lots of blogs, uh, you know, uh yeah, Any and ones in particular that you can share. Yeah, I have lots of guys so uh particularly in the front end world, uh there's a guy called Kenzy Dots. Uh he's an awesome guy. Uh so uh, he actually I I saw uh I saw one of his videos about 3 4 3 years ago 
and he was talking about React. And uh, back then, I was I was I was doing Angular, <laughs> and uh, he the way he presented that video, he he sold me to you know start using React. Um, you know um, the other guys uh, like uh, Adi Osami uh, is a I think he's a, a is part of the Chrome Chrome uh, Dev guys, and he he's really key on performance in terms of front end. Uh, you know, if you want to look at uh, some other, there are lots of guys. Wes Boss, uh, he does some good tutorials. Uh, some are free, and then also there's this awesome website called Egghead. Egghead, they do really short v video tutorials, but uh, like they are more specific on a particular thing. So it's like not less than five minutes videos. So uh, that's how I keep my, myself abreast. Um, so yeah, it can it can be very overwhelming with everything yes. when you scroll through your hacker news and there's a new thing every day. Um, so yeah, yeah, and then we oh, there are people who are just suffering from shiny object syndrome where it's like oh this new shiny thing let's let's do that. Um, but the way I've tried and sometimes failed is uh, I think what Joe has mentioned is uh, trying to understand what it, what problems it solves. So that if I ever have that problem, I know, okay, this is the right tool for that problem, right? Um, so look at the shiny thing still, but, but yeah, try to understand, just try to understand what does what, the shiny what, thing yes, do, yes. when will I use it? Yes, okay. what problem is it solving? So that you know, okay, when it's time to use it, I'll, when it's time to learn how to use it, I will use it. Um, so yeah, and also I live through my, my colleagues <laughs> who are more experimental than me, uh, Brian and Ken at Frontline. So also having people like that around you, I think helps where they're, they're always experimenting. They'll tell you, oh, by the way, this is how the problems or the challenges I had with XYZ technology. Yeah. Okay. So for uh, in closing, I'd like to open the space. I have only five minutes left. So I'd like to open uh, the floor to you guys. Um, I don't know how many questions they can take. Uh, Dearly, say four questions to the panel. Yes. So over to you. Tamri. Will you, can you help in handing over the mic? Yeah. So uh, if you have any questions, now is the Q and A session. Yes. Um, hi guys. Hi. Uh, my name is Rachel. Yep. Um, my question was: Do you think it's a failure in a company? when you're hiring senior engineers while you have you've had or okay while you have interns and junior devs and then now you're going outside of your company to hire senior engineers do you think it's a failure on your part or in the system within the company yeah okay she she'll take that <laughs> um so i would it depends on the context. First, if there are no senior engineers in the team, it's not a failure. It's actually necessary because it's a disservice to have junior engineers with no one to be like the one they're asking questions, especially for most situations like right now, most engineers you'll realistically expect to work in a startup. And with a startup, as you know, it's we are all iterating like it's agile. So we are all practicing and hoping things work. So if the only senior engineer you have there is a CTO, they will have to either spend all their time trying to level up, train the team, rather than go building the vision for the product and raising money, and then you're all out of business. So if there are no senior engineers, you definitely need to hire the senior engineers. But on the other hand, if all you're saying is you only want senior engineers without junior engineers, we cannot do interns, then it's really a waste. I, now that's what I would consider criminal because how do you expect them to gain experience if your senior engineers are also not leveling up someone else? Yeah. Uh, just, just to add uh, on to that, uh, I think uh, in our company, we don't have a senior engineer. Okay, what you do is we borrow a lot from the community. Okay, so in the community, you'll find with the offline or online, like the community meetup at uh, uh, High Hub and online, you know, uh, from Stack Overflow and ETC, okay? So we bought a lot from the community, okay? And within the team, we challenge ourselves, okay? So uh, that, uh, but, um, you'll find, for example, if uh, I discovered something new, a new architecture, okay? I'll just throw it 
and people will start discussing okay if it if it can help us build our business process of our clients right uh, um, reduce the development uh, duration then i think we adopt that that that, that new technology or whatever okay yeah that's how you build so when you're building a team everyone is a senior engineer or everyone is a junior engineer then it will increase your productivity yeah okay uh, another question uh. I think mine is, uh, I don't know whether I call it a question, but we have this situation in Kenya right now that you are a company, say you have been doing something. Say you are a nutrition company, this is what you have been doing, these are services you have been doing. And now everything is going online. You want to talk to your clients, they got to have an app that they get to. Now, in that scenario, would you consider now starting to hire a senior engineer on that case to work on some concept you have? Or would you go start to see junior developers and you build them up? Or what advice would you give such a company? Because we have reached a point, like I can tell you, like myself, in my in my, my GIS field, you realize you are the only person in the company that does this, and then a shiny thing comes up, and somebody is asking you, why can't we see our data online, wherever I am, but they are not willing to get to hire somebody else. So you have to level up in so many areas. So what advice would you give such in that case? Okay. Oh, you'll take yeah. Uh, what are you? Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that first. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that that's a hard one. But uh, in in my in my you know what I'd suggest is uh, there are different factors you need to take into consideration. Uh, well, the first thing is how important is this thing uh, that you need, right? And what are the timelines that you're looking at, right? then um, you have also to think about uh, in terms of resources, in terms of like money-wise, you know, uh, and stuff like that. And then also you, you might also consider, um, you can go either options. You can either have a junior guy uh, or hire a senior guy, but it's dependent on these factors. So for example, if you are to go with a junior guy, first of all, you need to have a junior guy who who is promising, right? Someone probably you've worked with and uh, he or she has, you know, uh, delivered some things and you think that this guy can, you know, uh, deliver this thing. Uh, but also you have to put into context in terms of timelines, right? Because uh, if you go with a junior guy, probably they'll, you know, they struggle a bit or they have to learn by themselves. Uh, so if the timelines are tight, you might have to hire someone who's already knows uh, the approach that he'll take in building this thing for you. Um, yeah, that's my take. Okay, so I'll have one last question uh, before we get the closing remarks of the panel. Hello, my name is Basil. I have this question. Uh, we have so, so many frameworks right now. Code Igniter, Laravel, Angular, React. What is the way to go for a company? What problem do you have as a company? <laughs> That's always a question we ask. Uh, so um, I noticed that I didn't introduce myself properly when I came in. Uh, Dennis Muduri, uh, head of engineering at Tana Sukh Africa, which does business as I have software consulting. And we are a design-led software development firm, which uh, focuses on human-centered design principles, using human-centered design principles to guide the process of uh, bringing solutions to market. And before we usually go with the tool set, we usually ask people, what is your problem? Um, how do you want to start? What is the size of your addressable market first? What uh, hypothesis are you trying to solve? So ideally, uh, we recommend this. If it's a new solution, choose what's called the boring stack. 
the boring stack is a set of tools that's uh, dependable, it's been around, it has support, it has devs that you can actually find in the market. It's not some shiny tool that you know, you're told to hire for you, like, who the heck writes this, you know? As in, it's choose something that's been proven, uh, tried, and tested. Uh, look for the community support um, uh, around it. In most cases, you might want to go with, ideally, um, if it's if the founder is technical, you might want to go with uh, something that they are familiar with because there will be a lot of close calls in the beginning. So choose what they are familiar with to ideally start with. So interrogating your problem will actually give you more answers uh, to that. Um, probably could meet later to kind of understand what it is that you want, but ideally that's the, uh, that's the approach uh, we take. So now for the closing remarks of yeah, the question I want to ask is, um, what do you believe the Kenyan tech ecosystem needs to uh, focus on now in order to evolve into a thought leader? You know, in the next, uh, ideally in the next 10 years. So what should we start focusing on now if we are to see ourselves as a thought leader in this space in the next 10 years? Um, um, I think I'll, I'll be very brief on that one mm -hmm. i think we need to stop consuming and you know building a lot okay because uh for in, in our team uh, we try to build libraries that we will use in the future okay so from packages libraries software solution we consume a lot of technologies no offense from the west okay but we're not building enough not building libraries packages open source uh, solution you know to for us to you know kind of dominate the market in in 10 years okay so if we keep on consuming we will still we will continue consuming come 10 years yeah. okay so push more stuff to the open source community as well build stuff for the open source community <laughs> yep uh, so mine is a bit different yep. my opinion for us to be a thought leader as a Kenyan market I think right now, I, I don't have a problem with reusing what's already there. I'm a strong believer in don't reinvent the wheel. So if a library has already been done for something, download it if it's available to use for free. No, no parity. But I think for me, the thing is, for a Kenyan perspective, like right now when you think about us in the tech space, we tend to be known because of M-Pesa. But ideally, that would have, in, my, in an ideal situation, that would have led to more of the people in the ecosystem becoming building expertise in how do we use technology to solve financial problems because i feel like yes we have the brain power but we don't really organize it in a way that we can all say we are focused on solving a particular thing or this is what we can be known for for solving so right now we're just mainly because it's not our fault we are still in the part where you need to pay the bills so you first look at who's giving you money to pay those bills but once we go past that I think we need to get to the point where those of us who are calling ourselves senior engineers, are we really building up the rest of the community? And as we're building them up, what are we trying to, what's the common solution or what's the common big problem we are all trying to approach in different ways? Okay, uh, Joe? Um, for me, I think uh, uh, what we need to do so that we can be thought uh, as thought leaders is uh, I think uh, we need to start building solutions uh, skewed towards what the problems that we have right here in Kenya, in Africa. Um, uh, consuming open source is good, yeah? But uh, most of the open source projects or libraries that we use, they are built by someone uh, in the West, right? Uh, it's not bad, them they build uh, they, they build for a solution that they were facing, right? So I think we need to start uh, building uh, solutions uh, for our problems, our particular problems, right? So I, I'll, I'll give uh, an example in that, uh, in the modern uh, or in the West, uh, right now, most people they have, you know, in, uh, internet access, and uh, you know modern phones and stuff like that but i was i was involved in a project where 
uh, you needed to build for refugees. And refugees, uh, they don't have uh, smartphones, for example. So all this flashy React stuff can't work for them. So, uh, so we need to build such solutions. And then another thing we need to, you know, uh, be uh, be vocal and you know talk about the stuff that you build. Whether it's writing a blog, whether it's uh, attending conferences and gear and speaking about the stuff, um, you know the challenges that you're facing and you know the solutions that you're coming up with, and uh, also mentoring uh, junior guys who are coming up. Uh, and I think once you do that, people will know you as a you know expert in a specific domain. So that even if someone needs to, you know, uh, they face a particular problem, they think that your name comes, you know, uh, automatically. Like this guy might know the solution, or might guide me. Um, <coughs> so yeah, just for me, I, I would think I think it's similar to what Joe has said. Um, it's about focusing on um, outcomes more than um, output. So I think companies right now are more interested in output so we'll just push out features 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 but ideally the goal should be we want features that provide customer uh, satisfaction right but there's no there's no way we can measure that we can't know if that feature we uh, um, we, we we deployed was successful right so if you we should focus more on customer value than just pushing out features because we want to push out features, which is basically like what he was talking about with the refugees and stuff. You need to go see what what does the customer actually will they actually use the the feature that you are you are you are, you want to deploy and feature not only features but also products. Do we really need another fintech company? Like yeah, that's what I, I would say. Okay. Cool. So thank you for you guys uh, for that question. You'll just see one of the panelists. <laughs> it's over. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, 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 I'll just uh, quash that for now, uh, so that we end and let the next session begin. Uh, in order to be fair to the program, actually, yeah, it's necessary that we be orderly. It's also the next one of the ways we'll actually <laughs> be thought leaders <laughs> in the next ten years. <laughs> so, um, thank you guys for showing up. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being here. Thank you, wonderful panelists, for volunteering time from your busy schedules to uh, be here. It's nice to. Uh, it's, it, it has been nice moderating for you. Uh, let's just give a hand of applause to them.